a different sunny. Hey, welcome, 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 friends and family to our next round of thesis defenses. It is bright and early on this Friday morning, and I appreciate all of you uh, joining us. And uh, I, I know we have friends from all around the globe who are in chat right now here to support these students. And I cannot express how much that means to uh, not only them, but also us as faculty at EAE. We wouldn't be here, none of us would be here without your continued love and support of these students. So they've been working away for two years on these Games, they've been working for nine months, but let's be realistic. Their master's program is two years of extremely hard work. And so I'm so excited to present uh, the team to you today and for them to present their thesis game for Souls of the Wind. So I'm just going to describe a little bit about what you can expect from our process today, and then I will hand it off to Deep and the team, and they will present uh, their thesis defense. So what we're going to do is we are going to uh, have a Q&A at the end of the presentation, at the end of the video presentation, where you can ask the dev team any questions that you might have about the game or the development process. But because we're on Twitch, which is super exciting, if you have questions pop up during the presentation, please write them in Twitch chat. And I will write them down on a, on a scrap of paper, and I will ask them to the team at the end of the presentation. So you don't have to wait to ask your questions. You can ask them in chat in real time and, and I'll make sure that those get to the team. Um, after, after we finish the presentation and after we finish the Q&A, we will go into private individual thesis defenses. So friends and family, if you're like, hey, when can I call my student and say congratulations? Or when can I take them out to lunch? Uh, we will be done with that right around 11.30 a.m. So uh, you're, you're safe to call your student after 11.30 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. Without further ado, I'm going to pass things off to the team and we're gonna hear more about how Souls of the Wind was made. Woohoo! So I'm trying to share right now. It's creating some problems. All right, I think we're good to go. Um, did you make sure you clicked, uh, you know, Zoom UI is, is so fun. <laughs> did you make sure you clicked the optimize for video and uh, yes. share audio? Okay, great. Yes, both of them. Perfect, awesome. All right. Hello, and a very good morning to everyone. Welcome to the thesis defense of Souls of the Wind, presented by Wandering Spirit Games. Before we move ahead, we would like to present the razor or elevator pitch of our game. In Souls of the Wind, as the Garden of the Four Winds, use your unique wind powers to complete the trials of the wind temples and free the souls of the wind from corruption. This is a tale of a world full of wind magic, through a beautiful third-person puzzle adventure game crafted by Wandering Spirit Games. We have been developing Souls of the Wind for nine months. We would like to take you through the important moments of that journey and how it happened. In August of 2020, every student of Cohort 10 in the EAE program pitched a game idea to the cohort. Through voting, 20 games were greenlit to go ahead and small teams were formed. Of those 20 games, two games were relevant to this development timeline. Casey Gatlin, vision holder of Souls of the Wind said, I wanted to take people on an adventure where they could explore nature and fall in love with their surroundings. I wanted them to experience a connection to the environments by using a force of nature to interact with the world, the wind. Jennifer Regan, vision holder of Spirit Wanderer said, I wanted to make a game like Spirit Wanderer because I liked the idea of giving the players space to breathe and to explore, with enough narrative to invoke introspection, but not so much that it's overbearing. I know that I like to play games where I can investigate and come to my own conclusions. And I also thought that it might be a game that would be feasible to make in one year, while giving lots of people stuff to put on their portfolio. One month later, among the 20 games, only 10 remained through another voting process. Among these 10 games were both Souls of the Wind 
and Spirit Wanderer. Souls of the Wind needed the level design and art expertise that Spirit Wanderer had to offer, and Spirit Wanderer needed the engineering acumen of Souls of the Wind. The two teams decided to merge and move on with the production of Souls of the Wind, at the same time deciding the team name to be Wandering Spirit Games. Another month later, we showed off our progress to the whole cohort and got ready for a rather nerve-wrenching voting process. At the end of this elimination round, 10 teams became 5, and Souls of the Wind became greenlit to become one of the Cohort 10 thesis projects. Finally, with production properly underway, we presented our game publicly through the Fall Semester's EAE play. And after 9 months of development, we are proud to present to you the cinematic trailer of soon-to-be-released Souls of the Wind. Hello everyone, my name is Erin Caprell, and I am the character artist, rigger, and animator for Souls of the Wind. I was responsible for a full character pipeline. First, I was asked to create our main character, the Guardian. Casey, the vision holder of this project, wanted to represent a non-binary person of color lead, which he may talk more about later. We looked to several peoples for inspiration, mostly the Lakota Sioux and African American hair, dress, and culture. Because we were unable to contact the Lakota tribe, we settled on being more ambiguous in our final designs while talking to experts and various individuals of identities we wanted to represent. Using the 2D art as a guide, I created a 3D model of our character. There are several tweaks I made to enhance the stylization while remaining true to our original idea. Once I made the rig, we put them through Mixamo to generate animations. The Guardian was my first task and they are one of the best characters I've made thus far. Additionally, I was asked to create our NPC characters. When I first designed them, I wanted to represent different body types, gender identities, and expressions. However, the scope of this project led me to only choose one design to represent all of the NPC models. I did my best to create a model that had loose-fitting clothing to help them appear more gender neutral, and to vary their identities through various skin tones, and different robe colors to represent corresponding areas. We chose to have them all wear masks as a sign of tradition and worship to the souls of the Four Winds, but also for the sake of scope. Finally, the character I'm most proud of creating is our winged quadruped characters, the souls of the Four Winds. This was my first creature character. I took a lot of inspiration from an artist called Anya Boz. The long legs and neck of her creatures gave me an idea for the creature we have now. There were several iterations, and one of our producers, Mingxi, and I settled on the design for the souls. The most challenging but greatest learning experience from this project has been rigging and animating the souls. There is no Mixamo for quadrupeds, so I animated this character from scratch. I watched tons of animal videos to ensure I created a believable movement. The wings were the most difficult, but I managed with some tutorial studies. I'm so thankful for my team, my professors, friends, and family for all being so supportive, not only for this project, but for the full two years of this program. It's been an amazing journey, and I hope to see you all out there. Hello everyone, my name is Azar Siddiqui, and I'm a gameplay programmer and social media handler for Souls of the Wind. My primary contribution on this project was in creating one of our core mechanics, the Wind Gust. The Wind Gust is a point-and-shoot projectile system, uh, which consists of four different kinds of projectiles, those being gusting wind, freezing wind, searing wind, and purifying wind. Uh, each of these different kinds of projectiles have 
a different uh, default reaction when interacting with particular environmental objects. Gusting wind, for example, applies force on environmental objects. Freezing wind is used to uh, freeze any moving environmental objects. Searing wind is used to melt any frozen environmental objects. And purifying wind is used to clear out the corruption in the world. So for this mechanic, I was able to implement a system where uh, for each of the projectiles, um, the, there was an ability to have a default or a custom reaction uh, when using them on environmental objects. Um, so for instance, two different kinds of uh, environmental objects could have completely unique behaviors uh, even when using the same kind of gas mechanic on them. Uh, an example to illustrate that point uh, can be seen in the gusting wind clip attached on the slide. We can see that on the left side, what we see on the left side is a custom reaction of the gusting wind, uh, which is unique to this puzzle only. And on the right hand side, we see a default reaction of using the gusting wind. Uh, this kind of architecture allowed for um, the puzzle designers and the level designers to have a lot of uh, flexibility in creating different kinds of puzzles uh, revolving around the same mechanic. In addition, I was also uh, able to rework our gust mechanic in changing it from uh, a singular point and shoot projectile to a continuous stream of gust, uh, which is what we see in the slides right here. I was also able to integrate Steamworks into our project and add and implement uh, 10 unique achievements in the game. Lastly, I've been involved in uh, social, working with social media on this project. Um, and as part of that, I've been gathering and creating content for the posts that go out on all our social media platforms. Uh, to conclude, I would just say that I have been really humbled and proud in uh, seeing where this project uh, came from, from its early transitioning from its early 2.5 uh, days to where it stands today. And uh, I've really enjoyed my time working with this team and uh, bringing this project to life. Thank you. Hello, my name is Bradley Don, and I am a level environment and content designer for Souls of the Wind. For the Volcanic Caverns level, I was the level designer and one of the environment designers. As the level designer for, vol for Volcanic Caverns, I was responsible for designing the initial 2D layout of the level, blocked it out in 3D using Unreal Engine BSPs, and iterated on the block out using player feedback. As one of the environment designers, I helped replace the level block out with final art assets and used the Unreal Landscape tool to create the natural cavern terrain for the level. I was also the level designer for the Snowy Mountain level. As the level designer, I created the 2D layout of the level, blocked it out in 3D using Unreal Engine BSPs, and iterated on the block out based on player feedback. For this level, instead of initially blocking out the ground using BSPs, I used the Unreal Engine Terrain tool from the start because I had a better grasp of how it worked from using it on the volcanic caverns. For the canyon level, I helped with the environment design by rendering the second half of the level. This consisted of me rendering the cave and temple environments within the level. I was also a content designer for the hometown level. This consisted of finding areas in the level to place collectibles and adding a little bit of rendering work and gameplay to support where I placed them. I had an amazing time working on Souls of the Wind. I was able to learn and grow so much and I am proud of what our team was able to accomplish. Thank you. Hi, my name is Casey, and I'm the lead engineer and creative director for the project. I'm the vision holder of the original concept and steered the creative direction of the project from the start. I also helped present the vision at every major pitch from the early prototypes to the final products. Part of this vision was to push the industry forward by positively representing black indigenous people of color and LGBTQ individuals. We made sure this informed the design of our main character, the townspeople, narrative, level design, and the themes and inspirations we presented. 
Alongside this, I was the lead engineer for the project. This meant being the go-to person for solving bugs and providing assistance with engineering related roadblocks. I also organized and ran code reviews for engineers, which was an idea that was brought up by one of our other engineers, Don. It was important to me to have a solid engineering foundation for the project, so I created diagrams, a coding style guide, and engineering task lists to provide that structure. My in-game engineering work was a mix of UI and gameplay programming, which included setting up the main character and implementing the settings menu, button prompts, and UI that was created by our UX UI artist, Mingxi. I also implemented the interface for saving and loading and the underlying plugin that drove that system. My goal as the vision holder was to make sure that the game achieved what I wanted it to be. As the development team did not consist of the people we were representing in the game, I pushed to involve those we were representing into the development process. We had a lot of help in this respect from the chair of the Division of Ethics Studies, Dr. Archuleta, and collaborated with an Echota Cherokee of Alabama musician, Golana. I brought this into our social media efforts as well, pushing our social media to make game development as accessible as possible to the audience we were trying to reach, while also promoting the game. And with that, I'll hand it off to one of our level designers, Connor. My name is Connor Workman. I served as a level and environmental designer on the project. I did the initial concepting of the Canyon level from a design doc for mechanics and puzzles, as well as 2D maps and an initial 3D block out of the space. After witnessing feedback from other playtesting sessions, I also created a secondary pass for the Canyon level as the first pass did not match the gameplay or puzzle pacing of other levels in development closely enough. This second pass can be seen in the videos on this slide. In the latter half of the project, I took on an environment design role as Nierokau redesigned the Kenyan level and I assisted with the revised rendering pass. I helped with blocking out props, boundaries, and terrain for the first half of the level, this ranged from, or this rendering pass ranged from the canyon entryway, the river scene, the decorated gate, a partial rendering of the town and the temple entrance. And these rendering spaces can be seen in the slide pictured here, as well as the loading screen of our game. Hello, my name is Deep and I'm the producer of Souls of the Wind. From the initial stages of the game, I have been actively involved in the design and evolution of the game world as well as the player mechanics. The concept levels during the 2D puzzle platformer stage of the game was developed by me. Long discussions with our vision holder Casey Gatlin gave rise to the concept of having four areas or biomes for the player to explore, which later evolved into the temples of the four winds. The initial controller setup and abilities prototyping was also something that I was engaged with. Later on, I actively participated in discussions and decisions as the abilities went through several stages of iterations and enhancements through playtesting and feedback. The sprint planning, task division, and timeline estimations were completely done by me. I did this by maintaining Jira Kanban boards and tickets while breaking down our development pipeline into manageable chunks. Along with that, I put particular emphasis on transparent communication and accessible documentation to make sure everyone were on the same page regarding the status of the different tasks and the overall state of the project. Every week, I also ran stand-up meetings as well as retrospective meetings at the end of every sprint. To make sure designers had access to assets, engineers had access to static meshes, modelers had access to concept art required me to analyze the chronological dependencies between various tasks. I made sure to do this through constant communication with team members, always trying to be one step ahead of their needs and requirements, as well as keeping on top of our Discord development channels to make sure no one was roadblocked, and if they were, they were provided with quick solutions and directions. I also helped out with some of the hero assets used in-game. Once I was finished with the 3D models of the hero assets shown on screen, Jennifer Egan helped me with their UVing and texturing, as she will elaborate in a few minutes. 
along with Azure, Casey, and Darianne, I ran social media initiatives. I curated posts, made sure they were informative, engaging, and descriptive, and grew the social media following of the game. Finally, I want to mention that working on this team have been my best experience of the program. One of my major goals of the thesis project as a producer was to make sure that every single team member can add something to their portfolio that they are immensely proud of, and at the same time, have the most fun that they can have making this game, while avoiding crunch as much as possible. After nine months of hard work, it is heartwarming to see that goal being fulfilled. Thank you. Hi, my name is Don Wayne. I'm a gameplay programmer for Souls of the Wind. Gameplay-wise, I implemented one of the game's core mechanics, the Airstream mechanics. Airstream is one of the player's special wind power that gives the player the ability to control objects with wind. The implementation of the movement is based on the physics logic of damped harmonic motion. I have also implemented the animation and the movement of the companion character. I have designed and implemented an organic behavior pattern for the companion so that it moves and looks more like a living creature. The movement of the companion is based on a combination of AI dynamic steering algorithms. I have also been working closely with our talented technical artist, Jolie, to help with implementing some of the visual effects, including the jumping and dashing particles and the corruption field. The last thing I have worked on is a dialogue system. I have created a system to allow communication between the companion and the player. The system wasn't being used in the current version of the game due to the time constraints. It was a wonderful experience working on Souls of the Wind. I enjoyed an amazing time with a team of talented developers. I'm so proud of everyone in your team and the game we delivered. Hope you enjoy Souls of the Wind. Thank you. My name is Jennifer Egan, and I was the narrative designer on Souls of the Wind, as well as an environment and level designer. As the narrative designer, I crafted the game's plot and responded to the evolution of it by adjusting here and there to accommodate shifts in production. I communicated with the team to collaborate with others to keep gameplay and narrative cohesive. I wrote all of the dialogue you see in-game, from NPC callouts to major plot moments to hints given to the player by the companion. In this capacity, I worked with engineers to create tools that would work within our pipeline and identify bugs over the course of my implementation. As an environment designer, I took point in maintaining our stylistic guidelines. Over the course of the project, this included creating mood boards, finding and purchasing modular asset packs from the Unreal Marketplace, and assembling primitives for architecture so that they could be used elsewhere to maintain our agreed-upon style. I was primarily responsible for the population passes for the town, snowy mountain, and volcano levels using both environment and character assets. I also did a final lived-in pass on every level to make sure that they felt organic. I also assisted in the creation of hero assets, whether that be modeling or UVing or both to suit what needs we could not fulfill from our marketplace purchases. As a level designer, my primary responsibility was to create our hub area, or the town. This includes the initial sketch and blockout phases, multiple iterations and changes based on player feedback, and finally, landscape painting and asset placement, making sure that each of the four areas of the town blended together nicely, both in terms of architecture, characters, and landscape. Hi, my name is Jolie Ook, and I'm a VFX and shader artist on Souls of the Wind. My job was to create VFX that would help convey information to the player about their environment and their abilities without directly telling them. For example, with these wind gusts, I placed a cloud at the end of it so that players can more easily see where the end of their reach is, and added colliders that spawn new particles 
so that it's easier to differentiate when the gust is hitting an object and when it's not. The way I create VFX first starts with the mechanic I'm trying to convey. I'll ask what the purpose the mechanic serves so that I can get a better idea of the shape and movement. We can see how this changes the look and feel in Jump and Dash that are more quick and instantaneous versus Airstream, which is more soft and floaty. I then drop a 2D version and break down the image into emitters that will make up the actual particle system. What I need to do for the emitters can range from modeling the meshes for the shape, drawing sprites, creating materials, and setting parameters, and making sure those parameters can be easily modified from the outside so that the particle system can be used in a variety of places. One neat thing about the wind meshes that you can, actually you can't really see in these pictures, but that you can see in game, is that the closer the camera gets to it, the more transparent the meshes get because it's wind. Another thing I worked on was environmental hazards. With the steering wind hazards specifically, I needed them to grow and shrink based on whether or not it was colliding with the rising wall from below. The last VFX I'm going to mention is the corruption effect I made. I tried to make this one look super pretty, like you want to get closer to it, while also trying to make it look ominous looking. This one especially gave me trouble because it made me aware of a glitch that only happens once you build the game. But this is what I worked on. Hi, my name is Junyang Zhang. I'm a lightning and technical artist. For this project, I contribute many technical arts such as grass, trees, lava, waterfalls, clouds, skybox, tools, and lightings. It was a great challenge for me to create these assets throughout the entire project. So first of all, I created the wing procedural system. As you can see from the gifts here, you can adjust many different settings, such as how strong of the wing do you want to be, which direction of the wing do you want to go, it's just like a very, very cool controller so that I can control everything in the scene. Second, I created a color correction setting for the tree shaders. I can adjust the two different colors separately for the bright and the dark areas with any colors. Third, I create an interactive foliage system. It allows the main character full step to interact with the grass on the ground. Next, I create a procedural spline tool for Unreal Engine 4 blueprint. Basically, I can drag any assets into the slots, and then I drag the spline, and all of this mesh will follow the spline into any directions. And sometimes, I can adjust the seat and the size for randomizing. It can improve my workflow fast and efficiently for block out during the production stage. Next, I create a four layers of fog for post-processing material. It allows me to control the fog with the distance and the color palette of the entire scene. Lastly, I did all of the lighting paths for each level. And sometimes I took a lot of screenshots for the advertisement and the promotion as well. Creating source of the wings really helping to create and design technical art assets more quickly and efficiently for future professional careers. Hello, I'm Kevin Lee, and I'm one of the gameplay engineers and sound engineers on the Souls team. As a gameplay engineer, I collaborate with our designers to, in order to fine-tune and modify the dash and jump movement mechanics in order to fit with their vision. We went from a double jump to a high jump in slow fall to what is in our final iteration, a simple jump that would allow you to dash once in the air. I additionally worked on a prototypical boss AI script that would allow the designers and other engineers to add and modify the rate at which the boss used certain attacks easily, without touching code. This initial pass was implemented in Blueprints, but about midway through the project I added a C++-based version in order to improve performance should we wish to use it. These scripts are still in the game, but remain unused due to gameplay changes. Before this time, the engineers on the team agreed to port the previous character code into C++ for enhanced performance. For this task, I was assigned the movement mechanics which I had originally worked on, the dash and jump which you see here. In doing so, I also added a slight coyote time, which allows the player some leeway on when they jump after they leave the ground, such as falling off a ledge. For the second half of the project, I was mainly tasked to work on two things, a dialogue system and audio implementation. 
For the dialogue system, I was given three major tasks to work on. The first was companion dialogue. This went through several iterations, and initially we could trigger companion dialogue in order to make our companion say something interesting. The second half of the task was to make dialogue triggers throughout the environment that the designers could easily add dialogue to the companion and talk through as well as adding other options, such as trigger one time only, to those triggers. The second major part of the task was integrating and extending a pack that we had bought, Advanced Typewriter. I added dialogue triggers, as well as NPCs that used those dialogue triggers that allowed a seamless integration of gameplay and dialogue. To those NPCs, I also added the capability for them to move around in the environment along splines. The third part of the task was creating in-world floating dialogue, a la Super Mario Odyssey. Initially, these floating dialogue boxes only held dialogue that appeared and disappeared from NPCs as you moved closer and further away from them, but eventually they were also applied to NPCs that had major dialogue as well. The majority of the time in the final months of the project was spent implementing sound effects in collaboration with one of the third-party personnel of the team, Anita Lin, who worked on creating the sound effects. Together with her, I implemented over 150 sound effects that enhanced and support our gameplay, with audio feedback and reactions over all of our maps, mechanics, and UI. Hello everyone, my name is Manas Rawat, and I am one of the gameplay programmers on the team. For the game, I prototyped the wind wall mechanic, which was highly inspired by the Sage's Wall in Valorant. The mechanic was designed to be used as a piston and a shield. The player can use this wall to stop incoming quote unquote, attacks or danger, and the player can use this to get over certain tall areas or obstacles. The wall was also designed to be used with certain puzzles that required the player to push certain objects up. Another major system that I worked on was the player performance tracking system. Initially designed to be used with a dynamic difficulty adjustment, this system or the aim of this system was to be modular and abstract enough that it can be extended and connected to more systems within the game. The system takes into account the number of times the player has died and the time it takes for the player to complete individual certain puzzle areas. The system uses these as matrix and provides normalized values that denote how good or bad the player is doing compared to the intended parameters for each of these matrix. It achieves this using three broad techniques. First, observing the data from the checkpoints and the puzzle areas. Second, calculating the performance based on the design parameters for each of the matrix. And third, parsing the performance values into relevant data that can be used by other systems in the game. The system relies on parameters set by the designers. Thus the system provided in editor tools for the designers to input the relevant data and test with it easily. No matter the performance of the player, the system is able to provide a valid performance value that can be easily parsed into useful information and parsed into other systems. That's it. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Nishi Zhou and I'm UX and UI artist in the Souls of the Wind project. In this project, I worked on the ability UI elements such as skill icons and ability will. In addition, I also helped with concept art by creating companion concept design, companion shaping art with different facial expressions. And in the early stage, I worked on the concept art of boss to help our character artists finalize the design. Back to the UI, I designed the dialog box and have several colored versions available for using in different things. In order to give player a good interactive experience, I made a crosshair animation so that it will shrink to nearly invisible when you don't use it and expand once you look at aimable object. I also helped with making props model, materials, and effects in the game, such as the crystal set on the right. For Steam purpose, I made 10 pairs icons for Steam achievements, and they all have a constant style to fit in our game. Overall, Souls of the Wind is a great project, and I really appreciate the opportunity to work with so many talented people. Good morning, um, my name is Nero, and I am the level designer and game designer on the project Souls of the Wind. And throughout the project, I was mainly responsible 
for the forest level and the canyon level. And during the pre-production for each of the level, I was first responsible for creating the pre-production design documents, such as the level move board, the 2D map, and the level flowchart. Ensure that once we go into full production, that everything can go, go as smooth as possible. I also create a, a rough level block out using BSV, as well as the puzzle elements that player will be interacting with using blueprints. As you can see uh, in the video, are some examples in the fourth level. And once we go into full production and after the iteration on the block out, I was also in charge of the rendering pass for the fourth level. Uh, as you can see in the the picture comparison uh, shown on the screen right now, it basically showed the before and after rendering comparison of the forest level. Pretty much the same thing for the canyon level. Uh, I created a design document for the team to reference back on and also help the team to uh, suggest some ideas before we, we start the next step. And I went ahead, I, I created the level block out as well as the gameplay mechanics, the puzzle mechanics using a blueprints. Uh, the video just showing one of the puzzles that in the canyon level that player will be interacting with. And finally, for the rendering pass, I was mainly responsible for replacing all the puzzle elements with assets and also uh, adjust assets placements for better gameplay experience, uh, including the level rendering optimization at the very end. Developing Souls of Win has been a great journey for me. I have learned a ton from the amazing team I have, and I really appreciate all the help that I've received along the way. And I think this is a great game that everybody should try it out. We also want to mention Anita Lin, our audio designer, who has been instrumental in creating the SFX for the game. Her audio and SFX creates a mystical vibe that the development team always wanted the player to experience. Working closely with Kevin Lee, Anita has managed to make sure that the game does not only look amazing, but feel majestic as well. Last, but in no way the least, Darian Salinas came into the team as someone with extensive knowledge on marketing and social media management, and she has been pivotal to the game's social media initiatives and outreach. Through her guidance, the team was able to connect with the community and build a dedicated follower base. Finally, we want to thank Scott Cunningham Galana for his amazing music and letting us use his creations in the game. The Division of Ethnic Studies Department and Dr. Elizabeth Archuleta for providing invaluable direction and guidance regarding cultural diversity. And of course, the entire EA Department at the University of Utah for their constant mentoring, guidance, and support. Souls of the Wind is now available to wishlist on Steam. We would like to end this presentation by providing the different social media platforms where our work and progress can be followed. Thank you. Excellent. I love this so much. And I love all the um, shout outs to the different resources that you all did. I think that it really sets your game apart and makes your contribution very, very unique to the, the thesis games that came out this year. So if it's all right with the team, I would love to move into the Q&A portion so that we can uh, get on to celebrating your successes. The first question in chat, I think there's, um, you, we have time. So if you would like to ask more questions, chat, please feel free to do so. I'm going to ask them in the order in which they were asked. So the first question is, what was the biggest design challenge you encountered during this project? So a question for a designer, design team. How did you address this challenge? Biggest challenge and how did you address it? Um, I feel like maybe Bradley, Nero, or Casey should be taking this one because it seems like it's related to gameplay. Um, sure, I can take it. Um, I would say one of the greatest challenges tw was towards the beginning was we had a lot of ideas for different wind powers we wanted to try and tackle. And it was figuring out which wind abilities would be the best overall gameplay experience. Um, 
And it came to some tough decisions where he had to decide like with the wind wall where it was functioning great. Like Manus did a great job doing it, but during uh, moment to moment gameplay, we just, it wasn't feeling uh, cohesive with some of the other abilities. So we had to make a tough decision to cut that and stuff like, um, I had really loved the idea of having like a super jump, which we had had. And, but we found that whenever you're just like running around and having to stop and do that, it just wasn't fun. So, um, at least for me, making those decisions to cut stuff was probably my most difficult design challenge. Does anyone else want to jump in? Yeah, sure. Uh, as my primary uh, responsibility was like creating puzzles and designing puzzles. And I think that the biggest challenge for me is to ensure that the, the, the puzzle is, is accessible and also challenging at the same time, uh, which involves a lot of playtesting and, and iterations and looking through all those playtesting records we have and figure out what went wrong, what player was confused about, what can we improve to make the puzzle. Since puzzle itself is sometimes challenged players to think outside the box, but we, at the same time, we don't want them to also feel confused and uh, don't know what they were trying to achieve. So I think that was the, the biggest challenge that we had for, at, at least on my part. Your, your puzzles were, were my biggest challenge, Nero. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, but good I job. you still enjoyed it though. <laughs> oh, of course, of course. It's super fun. Uh, Playtesting is a perfect answer. I couldn't have made a better answer for that question myself. Well, I love that you mentioned the playtesting. Amazing. Um, the next question is, and, and I actually, I think I'm going to combine two questions uh, in chat into one, which is, uh, what were some of the inspirations for level design and aesthetic for your levels? And then someone in chat recently asked about the biome. So I think those two questions can be combined, right? So when you designed the levels and the aesthetic of your game and the biomes, because we have the forest level and the canyon level, what was some of the inspiration behind that? I can take this one. Um, so I'll, at least I can take part of it. Um, I think one of our, our impetuses for this was the, figuring out how can we differentiate between different areas enough so that they each feel very unique in addition so that it feels natural that we could incorporate wind somehow into those areas as well as having um, environments that were feasible to make in a short amount of time and um, that wouldn't require a lot of additional work. For instance, um, I saw in chat somebody asked, um, why didn't we consider like a, like a coastal biome? We actually did. We considered a coastal biome at first, um, but part of that was we were thinking, how can we make this feel very different from the other ones, as well as um, how can we stay in scope? A uh, coastal biome might have been difficult because we would have had a lot of open space. We would have had to have a pretty good, you know, um, interesting skybox and a lot of water like functionality. And that might have been um, too difficult for us to wrangle in a short amount of time, you know. So that was that was one of the reasons we chose what we chose. Yeah, scope is super, super important. Um, I love that answer. So uh, on, on to the, the next question. This one might be one for the engineers. Um, checkpoint professor wants to know, how did you make the checkpoints? Ha ha ha. A little bit of a silly question, but I think uh, uh, the, the science behind um, being able to, to make checkpoints is actually a feat of engineering. So I would actually like to hear from the engineers. Manus, maybe you can take this one because you work very closely with the checkpoint system. Yeah, for sure. So um, one of the main inspirations or one of the main things we were looking forward to that uh, was how the levels uh, felt in terms of pacing. So we didn't want the player to be like, oh, I've crossed so much, I don't want to go back. And if the player suddenly dies, we didn't want the player to feel a lot of regret saying, oh, I'm not bad, I'm not good, that kind of stuff. So the main uh, design things that we were considered was how fast or how slow um, the levels felt. In terms of engineering, the checkpoints were also used 
for saying, uh, kind of dividing up the levels into segments that we can use to kind of analyze how good the player is doing. But mostly the decision for placement of the checkpoints was direct, uh, design oriented and pace oriented. I love that that answer, Manas, because checkpoints and, and saving progress is something I think uh, as game players we take for granted and the game's just going to autosave, right? We're all used to it. But when we when we start making games, we realize just how much work goes into planning the location of those checkpoints and the engineering behind getting the game to have memory and, and to save it. So I, I, I think that was a very, very good answer to that question. Um, we have one final question, time for one more. And this question was about music development. So can you describe the development uh, of the music for the game? Uh, Kevin can probably speak a little more on this one because he has been working with the uh, uh, SFX engineer, Annie Dallin, uh, most closely. But I can speak a little more on the pipeline or how Anita worked. So. Uh, Anita came into the program to the project around January, and she has been instrumental in creating the feel and the vibe that we wanted for the project. Uh, and to do that, what she did was she went through the entire levels. She created some sounds and put them on the on the videos of the game, and then asked the designers if that's something that they wanted to replicate or not. Uh, once the designers were happy with the sound that she was creating, she actually went in wise and created those sounds and then handed them over to Kevin, who made sure those sounds were implemented, they were bug-free, and they were working as intended in the game. Kevin can probably speak a little more on the pipeline of that if he wants to, uh, but that's a general idea on how we came across such good music, and we are really grateful to Anita for doing that. So for the sound effects specifically, um, we we already mentioned that we already use WYs, right? Uh, so WYs provide some blueprint specific nodes that I just wired into the level mechanics wherever I needed them. Um, there was only really one instance where I had to go into the actual C++ code to actually add some, uh, to actually add some functionality. And that was to the Airstream cubes. When you pick them up and put them down, there was originally no C++ functionality for telling the game when the player picked it up or put it down. So I had to put that in myself. I know that was that code was also used to put in the rotation control. So that's about all I can say on that. That's awesome. Thank you so much for a very thorough uh, and well-considered answer. So that concludes our uh, thesis defense for Souls of the Wind. Please chat and friends and family at home, join me in giving a huge round of applause uh, for all the hard work and all the dedication that was showcased today. I really can't emphasize enough just how awesome it is that these students came together remotely, working remote to make this phenomenal game. I just posted a link to the game in chat, and I also posted a link to our website where you can find out more about all the master's thesis games uh, that we are talking about this year on Twitch. Um, we have... Uh, the individual evaluation portion. So Twitch, unfortunately, you are not welcome to that. <laughs> um, that's private. That's for the professors and the students. So if you're wondering, hey, when can I take the student out to lunch and celebrate? When can I call them and say, well done? Uh, we should be done with everything around 1130. So that's a nice programming note for the parents. Uh, we will be back on Twitch at noon with To Hell With It, which is our final thesis game. So even though this stream is wrapping up and ending, we'll be back in a couple hours for our final thesis defense of the year. Exciting times. So I just want to thank everyone again, friends, family, uh, peers who have come to support these students. It means so very, very much to them. It means so very much to their professors to have your love and support here. Thank you again so, 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 so much. We are going to be back at noon. Bye, Twitch. <laughs>